Hey, fourth grade, it's Mrs. Alcazar, and I am really excited that your teachers asked me to share some information with you guys about volcanoes. It's my understanding that you are working on volcanoes. So let's dive right in. Let's talk about it. So the first question is, what is a volcano? Um, if you've been to Hawaii, maybe you've even seen an active volcano. I have seen an active volcano. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But basically what a volcano is, is if you look at this picture, it's literally just a break in the Earth's crust. I want you to go all the way back to second grade. And I want you to remember that there are layers of the Earth, right? And the outside layer um, is called the crust. And when there's a break in the crust, the molten rock that's underneath can push out through that break. And we call that a volcano. Um, okay, let's keep going. So let's talk about that rock that's pushing out. Where does all that molten rock come from? Well, if you guys remember, again, back to second grade, the inside of the earth is made up of these layers. There's the crust, there's the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. And the earth is enormous, ginormous, it's huge. And because it's so huge, there's tons of pressure and heat inside. And so all that heat and all that pressure melts the rock that's inside. And some of the rock is hotter and some of it's a little thinner, some of it's thicker. Um, you can kind of think of it as like really hot toothpaste, some of it. And that molten rock, there's so much energy in there, it wants to get out. So I want you to imagine, this would be fun. I don't think you should do it because your mom might get mad. But if you had a can of soda and you shook it up, and there's gas inside soda, right? And then you popped it open, it goes all over. So inside of the earth, there's not only molten rock that we talked about, but there's also gas. And so all that energy and heat and gas wants to come shooting out. And so that's where it, the volcanoes come from. So I just used a word called magma. What actually is magma? Well, magma is just the melted rock when it's inside of the earth, okay? And this is a picture of some magma that's rising up and you're also seeing some bubbles in there. What do you think those bubbles are? Gas, exactly. So um, we can see that there's some gas inside of this magma. So it's a little bubbly, it's very hot and it's making its way up to the surface. Now. What is lava? I'm using the word magma. What is lava? Well, once it comes out, right, and now it's on top of the crust, we call it lava. So magma inside, lava when it's outside. Okay. Now let's talk about volcanoes. Are all volcanoes the same? Well, that's a good thing for you guys to research. I'm not going to give you all of the information here. There are different kinds of volcanoes, though. I will definitely tell you that. And not only are there different kinds of volcanoes, but there's different kinds of lava, too. So on the left, you see something that's called a shield volcano. And it's called a shield because it kind of looks like a warrior's shield. And those are kind of gentle domed volcanoes. And the magma, excuse me, the lava that comes out of them is kind of thin and it's kind of runny and it's kind of slow and it just kind of trickles down the side of the mountain. There's a very famous volcano in Hawaii called Kilauea and it's an active shield volcano. And it's currently um, all the time, all this lava is trickling out, trickling out. And so that is upstate in Hawaii is actually growing. It's the only state in the US that continues to grow because as that lava comes out, it hardens and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's a little piece of trivia. There's a state in our union that is still growing. On the right side, we have what we think of as a very explosive volcano. And these are called pyroclastic flows. And these are the big ones that explode and there's gas and there's poisonous gas and there's um, ash and there's mud that flows down and of course, lava. And these can be pretty violent, okay? And there are lots of examples of these kind of exploding volcanoes. And when they explode, the gas and the, and the ash go so high up into our atmosphere, they can even block out the sun and affect global temperatures, which is pretty crazy if you think about that. Now, let me go way back and tell you guys, when I was your age, that's a long time ago. A lot of you guys know that I grew up in Washington state. 
not Washington, D.C., but Washington State, our neighbor to the north, a couple states up. And I live near a mountain called Mount St. Helens. And when I was your age, I was on the playground during recess time and Mount St. Helens actually blew up when we were at school and it was a pyroclastic flow and literally the top exploded and blew completely off the top of the mountain. So when you see pictures of Mount St. Helens now, the top is gone and it was scary. I mean, it was, it felt like an earthquake and the, the ash went up and it blocked out the sun. It looked like it was snowing and there was gases and they canceled school. My parents had to come and pick us up and um, take us home. And it was an emergency and we had to evacuate from our town. So um, it was pretty scary. But now when I look back on it, kind of exciting because uh, it made history, right? So interesting. I thought I'd share that. All right. So why do we have volcanoes? Well, I already said that there's cracks in the crust, right? So you guys can look a little bit more into that. But if you imagine that you had a hard boiled egg, and it was all cracked up and you had all those little pieces of the shell that were cracked apart, each of those little pieces would be called a plate. So we have these things called tectonic plates and the plates move around and they separate and they dive under each other and all of these things allow that magma that's inside to come out. So we don't have enough time here to go into every single one, but just understand that those plates moving around and diving around is what allows that magma and that lava to flow out. Okay, so here's the fun part. You guys are, I'm asking, or your teachers want you guys to design an investigation, something about volcanoes, okay? You could build a volcano, you could build a shield volcano, a pyroclastic one, Make sure that your mom knows that you're building a pyroclastic one before you blow it up in her kitchen. You could um, look at the different kinds of magmas. You could do anything you want. I chose magma. So what I did was I dug around inside my kitchen and I found something that I thought, huh, this would make a good magma. And I tried to get it to flow differently because I know that some lavas explode and I know some flow slowly and some flow a little bit faster. So I experimented and I filmed what was going on. So I'm going to show you those videos. Sorry for the noise. Oops, excuse me. Sorry for the noise in the background. My family was there while I was filming. So you're going to hear my kids. But here is video number one. Oops, let me present that so you can see it. Sorry about that. Okay. So this is magma number one. You can see it's very slow moving. You'd have to stare at this for a while to see how slowly that's moving. It's moving, but it's pretty slow. Okay. How about video number two? Okay, this is magma number two. It's moving a lot faster. Hmm. I wonder if I could get it to move even faster. Let's find out. Video number three. Okay, friends, here's magma number three. Oh, wow, that's moving a lot faster. Hmm, I wonder what the difference is. That's for you guys to figure out. Okay, so I wanted to investigate why some lavas explode and, and some flow and they flow at different rates. So that is what I did. And I'm not going to tell you what I did. That's for you guys to figure out. So number one, I want you to figure out what you think I did. What did I use? What does that look like? And what did I do? So that's a something for you to think about. And maybe you guys could talk about it amongst yourselves in your Google Classroom. And number two, I want you to come up with your own challenge. Now, there's a couple rules. I don't want you to buy anything. Use things that you have around the house, okay? I know you guys all have stuff around your house, so don't buy anything. If you want to build a volcano and explain to us what kind of volcano it is, great. If you want to experiment with plates, awesome. If you want to look at magmas, cool. You can't copy exactly what I did. 
Come on now. Um, and so I want you to build some sort of model and I want you to explain it to us. OK, so I didn't explain mine because I want you guys to think about it. But if you could build a model and explain to us what it teaches us or what it explains about volcanoes, that would be awesome. Video is great or photos and typing, whatever. But your teachers will give you more explanation on when that is due. OK. All right, you guys. So I've been talking a while. That's a lot of information about volcanoes. I hope you found this helpful. Um, happy distance learning. We miss you and I will see you guys soon. And if you have any questions, hit me up. Bye.